we are going to talk about nib cages. Specifically, we're going to talk about this Nico G nib with a welded on nib cage. Now for comparison, if I can get my camera to focus, this is a, let me pull it out of the holder, a Tachikawa G nib. This thing has seen a lot of use as you can tell by how grungy it is. It takes a licking and it keeps on ticking. I find that Nico performs pretty similarly, similarly, similarly <laughs> to Tachikawa. Uh, the G nibs themselves look very very similar the ink cage which has been welded on it's actually an aftermarket mod and I picked this nib up at paper and ink arts here in Nashville Tennessee they have an online store which I highly recommend as it's one of the few I know of that will let you buy ink uh, nibs individually so I've gone ahead and put my nib with nib cage in my holder and I've got a cute little illustration that I'm going to ink for you guys today. And I'm going to do that with, I can't decide if I want to use Sumi ink or acrylic ink, but since this has an ink cage and I don't know that acrylic inks play so nicely, I will go ahead and use Sumi ink. Now it is not recommended that you use inks that are shellac based with these sort of nib cages or ink cages. So Sumi ink is an excellent choice and I've already got an illustration. So I'm going to remove this from the book that it is in because I find that inking around those annoying spirals tends to ruin what I'm trying to ink. Oh, I'm just trying to pull out two pages at one time. And I'll just use this next page as my scrap paper because it's important when you're inking with a dip pen that you have some scrap paper, clean water, and a paper towel handy. So even though you guys can't see it, do rest assured that I did come prepared. And this is not an inking tutorial, but if you are looking for that, you can find those in my advanced inking techniques playlist. Highly recommend you check it out. I do show you guys how to ink with a G nib. So I've got my clean water, I've got my scrap paper, I've got my ink. Um, I kind of want to use a dinky dip though because That ink is just gonna get all over. So, in this adorable soapbox, I keep my dinky dips. And I've got all sorts of ink in these cute little pots. And this is something else that I picked up at Paper and Ink Arts here in Nashville. And here is the pot of Sumi. I write the type of ink on the lid because I have a lot of black inks and you can't always tell. And here is my dinky dip holder. It currently has all acrylic inks in it. I'm just gonna pop the black acrylic ink out. I think it's sparkle black anyway. Pop the Sumi ink in. This will hold my ink while I'm inking and I just go ahead and unscrew the lid. And before we get too far, I should probably go ahead and disclaim that Paper and Ink Arts is not a sponsor of this channel, nor is it a sponsor of the blog or me as an artist, but I do appreciate that they are trying to serve an underserved community. And I do appreciate their customer service and their attention to detail and quality. So I'm just a happy customer. All right, so there is the dinky dip and those were developed for calligraphers and hand letterers of which I am neither, but I am an inker. And I highly recommend dinky dips if you are also an inker. Uh, unfortunately, the comic art community has decided to abandon, not really, but you know, they are not necessarily so keen on just, uh, playing with new materials as they are with just switching wholesale to digital. And I'm kind of a holdout, it's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and dip my ink, my caged nib in water just to sort of prep it. And I'll go ahead and dip it here in the Sumi ink, which has thankfully been filled. 
past me, you're so clever. So the reason you would want an ink cage on your nib is that means it has a much larger ink capacity because you see this cage holds more ink for you. And I talk about that in my paper and ink art haul video. I do a demonstration because I am awesome. And this is a little doodle that I drew up the other day so I'd have something to ink, basically. Now I'll just zoom way in and we'll get started. And I am inking on Canson mixed media paper, which definitely has a texture. So you do want to be careful because textured papers will catch your, your nib and kind of affect your lines. And if you're just doing loose sketches, it doesn't really matter so much. But if you're trying to draw something in a controlled specific way with specific line weights for specific items, you do want to be aware of that. But I am being really delicate and so far I've not had any real issues. And I am using a Tachikawa nib holder. They do also sell these at Paper and Ink Arts, but I've had this one for seven years now. And I picked this up, uh, ordered it really from Jet Pens when I was at SCAD. And something to keep in mind when you're inking with nibs is they lay down a deposit of ink rather than a line of ink. So they do take longer to dry. So I'm working around those wet areas as much as I can. I am also rotating the paper quite a bit. This is so I can get the best angle possible for each line that I'm drawing. And the cage does not really change the performance that I've noticed other than to expand the um, amount of ink my nib can carry. And I haven't tried them yet, but Paper and Ink Arts does carry a few other nibs that have nib cages attached. I'll zoom out a little because I am moving around a bit now and uh, I don't want to go off camera. See, my natural rhythm is after every few lines I want to dip, so I may even be dipping too much. I just noticed that I didn't really draw her fingers in here. So I will sketch them in carefully. But yeah, this G nib with an ink cage is a good anchor. I have a feeling I'll be able to recommend this. I have a feeling I'm gonna... I've been using the same well taken care of GNIB for like you know, is five years now, but it doesn't see like daily use. But I'll tell you, these cage nibs are great. At least this one is. I haven't tried any of the other ones yet. I mean, you're still inking with a dip pen, which has its own challenges. Some of you may not find that it is for you. And typically, I don't ink with dip pens. I usually ink with, um, if I'm inking with a traditional tool, I'm usually inking with a brush. Sorry, I'm trying to pull nice lines. Um, 
and um, because I really like bouncy lines and also don't like a lot of mess. But while I was doing all those tutorials for um, my advanced inking techniques playlists, uh, while I was going over a bunch of the stuff that had been sent in the uh, Art Snacks Inktober, um, Inktober special collection, I ended up falling in love with dip pens again. I guess I never really fell in love with them to begin with, so I fell in love with them for the first time. So, and then that sort of led to an interest in fountain pens, because I was like, I want to be able to do nib work on the road. And that led to me modding my own fountain pens. I think I got kind of heavy handed towards the bottom there, which is okay. All right, so there's still some things left to ink. I'm going to clean this out. You don't want to leave the ink in your nib. I'm going to clean that out in the clean water. Just sort of gently swish it in the clean water. And I'm going to let this dry and then I will come back to it after it's had a chance to dry. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes. All right, so my initial layer of ink has had a chance to dry. Now I'm just going to go ahead and go in and ink in her eyes and maybe some textural hair um, noodles and swoops, I guess. So I'll go ahead and zoom way in. So one of the reasons I prefer a brush is um, when I'm inking eyelashes like this, it tends to cut the paper and then blob, as you can see over there. And I'm going to have to let that dry and then I can try to correct it. And that happens because the paper gets wet and the paper gets cut because you're putting a bunch of really fine lines in one area. Maybe I'm bearing down too hard when I do it. I'm not really all that sure. But it's something that is always problematic for me. So if you have any tips, maybe I should do it like one eyelash at a time and let it dry and then come back to it. But anywhere I'm trying to do a lot of detail with a pointed nib or a dip pen nib, it's always a problem. This would be very easy to do with a brush because you've got like that organic sort of squiggling motion that you can rely on, but you can't really do that with a dip pen. So this is a learning experience for me, for sure. And I don't intend to cover all of her hair. I just want to do some low lights to give the impression of texture and volume. I can't really afford to cover her whole hair anyway because it's starting to damage the paper surface by doing this. So if I did want to cover her whole hair, I would need to um, do this in stages, I guess, probably like how I should do the eyes and the eyelashes. So I'll put in an initial fill and come back to it after it's had a chance to dry. And I'll start in with Puffer's nose and Puffer's eyes. her eyes just a little bit. All right, now I have 
used through the ink on my cage. It's pretty substantial. Held a pretty substantial amount, sorry. Sometimes it's hard for me to ink and talk. So if you're not using paper that's really sturdy enough, it will start to buckle from all the scratching and all the water you're putting on it. And I am using Canson's Mixed Media XL paper. So it's their cheap mixed media paper. I see a lot of YouTubers use it. And I usually will use watercolor paper. Even inexpensive watercolor paper it tends to be very heavy compared to mixed media paper. Or I will use pretty much water, just watercolor paper or Bristol. Um, but I see a lot of YouTubers use the XL, so I was like, I wanna find out for myself. And uh, it's okay, but it doesn't work as well. As say a heavy duty watercolor paper, or even a cheap watercolor paper, even, even Canson's XL watercolor paper would uh, be better than this because it's about 140 pounds. So it's kind of thick little thicker than cardstock and this is really more like thick sketchbook paper and it has about the same amount of texture as thick card uh, thick sketchbook paper so it's not taking the nib super well definitely having some problems it's okay though that's why we research and review things and we share our experiences so Maybe someone else will use a different paper. I think I'm almost done. All right, so that was a demonstration of a Nico G nib that has a nib cage on it. I am cleaning my nib cage off in clean water and I am removing the excess water with a Viva paper towel. Those tend to have less schmutz that it might leave on your nib, less likely to get caught up in the tines. Although I heard they make pin wipes now, another thing you can get through paper and ink arts, but I'm just using a Viva paper towel here. And I'm just carefully cleaning my nib because these do require a little more care and they are a little more expensive. I paid $5 for this nib, which I don't consider a problem because two reasons. One, like I told you guys, I've been using the same Tachi Kawaji for five years. So I'm gonna get a lot of use out of this. I'm definitely gonna get $5 worth of use out of it. Two, um, somebody attached this little spring which serves as the nib cage by hand. That is a skill that I do not have. I don't have those springs. I don't feel like buying those springs. Um, I would end up having to buy them in bulk so it would cost more and I'd have all these tiny springs and then I'd have to secure them to the nib. And honestly, for my time, for, for my lack of knowledge, for the amount of nibs I would ruin learning this, $5 for a nib is really, really cheap. So I'm fairly satisfied with the price and I was definitely satisfied with the performance. If you like G-nibs, if you are a comic person and you are not familiar with paper and ink arts and you're not familiar with ink cages or dinky dips, I highly recommend you check all of those things out. I think it's gonna make a big positive difference in your inking and in your art. I know it makes a difference in mine, just the dinky dips alone have made a really big difference in my art and my ability to make art without a ginormous mess. Um, so I hope you guys found that helpful. Excuse me. I hope you guys found that helpful. I hope you found it useful and maybe even inspiring. And I hope you will continue watching this channel because I have a few other interesting nibs that I want to demonstrate for you guys. And um, yeah, so if you're interested in inking, please keep watching. I'm back at Hilburn. This is my studio, Netto Soup Studio. I hope you guys have a great day and I hope I see you again soon. Bye.